Hello everyone and welcome back to another painting tutorial video. In this video I am going to show you how to paint Iron Jaws Chopper Boys. Here is the list of colors which I used on the models. You can find it also in the description down below. I assembled the bodies and most of them have their weapons attached, however the big cleave left it separate with the chest armors and shoulder pads for all of them and I also left out the boss's lower metal jaw just to have an easier painting on the models and I primed them with wag flesh. The first color I'm going to use for the flesh is Death World Forest. I use a small dry brush and I start dry brushing the skin. Then I switch to a small layer brush and I start applying the color onto the flatter areas just to get a strong clear look on the models. Now I am going to make a mix of 1 to 1 part ratio of walk flash with warpers green and again I use a small dry brush and start dry brushing the skin mainly on the top raised surface areas leaving a slight presence of the death world forest close towards the deepest recesses on the lower areas to get a nice shaded look. Then I switch to a small layer brush and start layering the flatter parts but also adding a stronger tone towards the upper parts of the bodies. For example on their bald head I am almost making a full cover with the mix leaving out the recesses. Also on their chests and arm muscles I am making thin vertical lines as to appear as pure muscles flexing on the models. Now I'm going to use Elysian Green and with a small layer brush I start edge highlighting all the sharpest features of the skin, main focus on their heads and the veins on their arms. And with Ogryn Camo, I fine edge highlight all the sharpest details on their heads with an extra small artificer brush.
Their mouth turned out a bit too bright in my taste, so with some Collier Green Shade Wash I paint the lower lips to tone it down. And once the wash is dry, I am going to use Warbos Green and with an extra small artificer brush, I edge highlight the sharpest features on their lips. Now that the skin is done, I can move on to their mouths and eyes. First I'm going to use Nagar of Night and with a small layer brush I start base painting the inside of the mouth including their thongs. Following it with Corn Red, I layer and edge highlight their tongues. I am going to use Karak Stone as a base color for their teeth. I use a small layer brush due to their size. Following it with Agrax Earthshade Wash, I apply it onto the teeth. Once the wash is dry, I use Morgus Bone and with a small layer brush I start layering the teeth, leaving out the deepest recesses. And with Screaming Skull I edge highlight the teeth and also just putting a dot on each tip. Now that the mouth is done, I can focus on their eyes. For this, I use corn red as a base color. I use an extra small artificer brush and just carefully paint them. And with Troll Slayer Orange, I add a dot into the center of each eye. It is quite translucent paint, so I added twice the color just to get a nice highlight on the eyes. Now I'm going to focus on their pants. I used Mechanica Standard Grey on two models and I used Morphang Brown on the other two. 
I use a medium and a small layer brush and just quickly base paint the pants, being careful around the already painted areas. As for the Chieftain pants, I decided to use a better black as a base color. The pants which are painted with Mechanic Standard Grey, I am applying a wash of Agrax Earthshade. And for the Morphang Brown painted pants, I am using Nolnoi Wash. While the washes are drying, I am using ashing grey on the Chieftain's pants. I use a small dry brush and start dry brushing. Now I'm going to use Dawnstone and I do the same technique like on the Chieftain. I use a small dry brush and start dry brushing the standard grey pants, picking out the raised details. Then I switch to a small layer brush and I start edge highlighting the raised surfaces just to get a nice strong finish on the rigid of the pants. And I edge highlight also the Warchief's pants too with Domestone. And finishing the grey pants with some Admin Stratum Grey, I edge highlight mainly around the stitches, the rigids, to pop out a little bit more. Now that the grey pants are done, I'm going to finish the brown pants. I use Steel Legion Drab and with a small dry brush I start dry brushing them. And finishing it with some Karak Stone. I edge highlight the ridges and the stitches.
So the first color I'm going to use as a base color for the wooden parts of the handles, the boots and belts is Dryad Bark. I use a medium layer brush and I start base painting them. Once the base painting is done, I am going to apply some Nuln oil wash onto these areas. Once the wash is dry, I am going to highlight them with Gorefoot Brown. First I use a small dry brush and I start dry brushing the boots and the sacks. Then I switch to a small layer brush and I start edge highlighting them, especially the belts, the handles of the weapons and also the boots. Now I'm going to use Morgus Bone as a base paint for all the straps. Once it's done, I use Agrax Earthshade Wash onto the straps. Once it's dry, I am going to use Screaming Skull and I start base painting the stitches on the pants with it. And I also edge highlight the straps.
Now I'm going to focus on the blades. For this I use Dumbo Brown as a base color for the blades itself. I use a small base brush and I start base painting them. Now I'm going to use Riser Rust dry paint and with a small dry brush I give a rough dry brushing onto the blades. After that I'm going to use Lead Belcher And with a small dry brush, I start give another rough dry brushing onto the blades itself. Now I'm going to apply some wash light rust from Vallejo. I use a small base brush, I start applying it onto the blade itself, then I clear my brush with water and then just remove most of the paint just to leave some of it on the blade itself. Once it's completely dry, I'm going back to use again lead belcher and pretty much the same technique with a small dry brush. I give a rough dry brushing onto the blades itself, the sharpened part mainly. Then I switch to a small layer brush and I start base painting all the other metallic details on the models with lead belcher. Now I'm going to use Agrax Earth Shade Wash and I quickly apply it onto the small metallic details such as the chain mail, some of these keychain rings and other metallic parts. And finishing the blades and the metallic details with Stormhost Silver, I use a small layer brush and I do an edge highlighting onto the blades and all the other metallic details. Now I can focus on the armor plates, the shoulder pads and the chest pieces. I am using Abaddon Black as a base color for the black armor plates.
As for the yellow armor plates, I use Everland Sunset as a base color. I do apply two coats onto each armor plate just to get a nice, strong, even finish. Now for the black armor plates, first I use Ashing Grey. I use my trusty old brush, which is small enough to give a decent dry brush onto each black armor plate. Following it with Dark Reaper. I use a small layer brush and I start picking out the raised surfaces of the metals. Then I'm going to use Thunderhawk Blue and with a small layer brush I start edge highlighting the upper sharper corners and meeting points to get a nice highlight on them. And finishing the black armor plates with some Fenrisian Grey, I add a dot on the tip of each sharpest features and also where the corners are meeting. Now I'm going to focus on the yellow armor plates. For this first I'm going to use Reichland Flash Shade Wash. And with a medium shade brush I start applying it onto the metal parts. Once the wash is completely dry, I am going to use Ariel Yellow. I use a small dry brush and I start dry brushing the armor plates, being very careful around the black armor plates. Then I switch to a small layer brush and I quickly edge highlight in some of the areas which with the small dry brush I couldn't reach. 
mainly around the sharpest features of the knee pads just to blend them even together with the dry brushed yellow to get a nice strong finish. And finishing the yellow armor plates with Gushapti bone. I use a small layer brush and I start edge highlighting all the sharpest features and meeting points where can be meet together all these raised surfaced scratches, marks and ridges. Now I'm going to give a weathered battle damage look onto the armor using Abaddon Black. I use a small sponge, dipping it in the paint. I start dabbing it first on a tissue paper, most of the paint. And once there is just a little amount on the sponge, I start dabbing it onto the armor plates in random areas and with random pressure. Then I switch to a small layer brush and around the black dots I pick out some of them just to be a little bit, bit bigger. And also on the sharpest corners I add a very thin line as well randomly. Then I'm going to use Stormhost Silver and I start base painting all the pins on the models and also I add a very little amount in the center of each black scratches to represent the metal underneath the painted armor as a chipped effect. And with some Agrax Earthshade Wash, I decided to apply it onto the pins just to tone them down a little bit more and have them a bit more weathered. Now I'm going to focus on the small details such as the Stormcast helmet, the skulls and horns. First I'm going to use Retributor armor as a base color for the Stormcast helmet. Then I'm going to apply a thin coat of Reichlin Flash Shade Wash onto the Retributor Armor. Once it's dry, then I'm going to make a mix of Retributor Armor with Stormhost Silver, a 1 to 1 part ratio. And I start layering the helmet itself. And with Stormhost Silver I quickly add an edge highlight onto the helmet. I also pick out the pig pegs that are on the 
helmet. As for the skulls and horns, I use Sandry Dust as a base color and I start base painting them. I add some Agrax Earthshade Wash onto the Zentry Dust painted areas. completely dry I am going to use Morgus bone and for the little bit bigger details such as the jaw bone on the chest piece I use a small dry brush and I start dry brushing the teeth and also the bones And for which part is quite hard to reach, I just use a small layer brush and I do a layer and I highlight onto the smaller details. I also go through in some of the dry brushed uh, details as well, just to have them a little bit stronger contrast. And finishing the bones and teeth and horns with Screaming Skull. I use a small layer brush and I just do an edge highlight on each cracks and sharpest details on the bones and teeth. And with Pallid Witch Flash, I base paint the strings that are holding the lower jaw on the chest piece and also some of the strings that are holding together the armor pieces. Now I can focus on the severed head, for this first time I'm using Rhinox height and I base paint the hair and also the nails of the models. Following it with Noon Oil Wash, I apply a wash onto the Rhinox Hide painted areas. While the wash is drying, I use Rucker Flash and I quickly base paint the skin. I use a small layer brush for this and I apply two thin coats to get an even cover on the head.
Now that the wash has dried, I am going to use Gorthor Brown and I start layering and highlighting the hair and the nails using a small layer brush for this. I add a wash onto the skin using Rikon Flash Shade. I don't use too much, just enough to get into the recesses. Once the wash is dry, I am going back to use Rock Art Flash and with a small layer brush I start highlighting the sharpest features of the head and this way I have a subtle contrast on the skin. Now I'm going to use Palette Witch Flash and with an extra small artificer brush I base paint the purples and also add a small amount of edge highlight on the sharpest features of the face to pick them out a little bit more. I am going to add now some Caramber Crimson Wash. I use an extra small artificer brush and I start adding it on the eye bags, a very little amount under the eye pupils. I am also making thin lines from the nose, the inside of the mouth, inside the ears and of course I use a generous amount at the bottom where it has been cut. Once it's dry, I can add the blood for the blood god. Once again, I use my extra small artificer brush for this. I dilute the technical paint with some water just to make it flow easier. And I am adding very thin lines coming from the nose, the mouth. I am adding a small amount in the center of each carpet crimson washed areas as well. And of course, down in the bottom, I am adding a generous amount. And also I'm going to give the bloody effect onto their weapons. I mix Rhinox Hide and Blood for the Blood God, a 1 to 1 part ratio. I am using a small dry brush and just start dabbing it onto their blades and in some random areas. I am not using too much, sometimes less is more. And to make the blood effect a bit more fresh, I am using only Blood for the Blood God. And I use the same technique by using a small dry brush and I am dabbing it onto the previously painted parts to give a fresh bloodshed effect on the blades. The only thing left is to base the miniatures. And here are my chopper boys ready to slaughter on their journey for Gork or Mork. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial, if so do subscribe to my channel, hit the like button if you found it useful or helpful, also click on the bell button if you wish to be notified about future video tutorial contents. At the moment unfortunately I have limited free time to make these videos, but I hope once they are released they don't disappoint you. And also a huge thanks to my patrons who are helping making these videos happen. Thanks for watching, cheers.